The Conservative Justice and Development Party is kicked out of office by voters in Morocco's elections. A party whose leader is close to the king won the most seats and will head a new government. Has Morocco closed the chapter on its own Arab Spring, 10 years after nationwide protests calling for change? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to a second Inside Story from the Moroccan capital, Rabat. I'm Bernard Smith. The Justice and Development Party has headed the government here for a decade, the dominant party in two parliaments. But in Wednesday's elections, it was almost wiped out, losing 113 of the 125 seats it held, a result seen as a rejection of a party that had adopted unpopular policies that alienated many voters, including its own base. Now, Morocco will be run by a party seen as having the support of the palace. So will that lead to any change in this North African country? We'll talk to our guests in a minute, but first, this report from Jamal al Shaya. Business tycoon Aziz Khanouche, the man expected to be Morocco's new prime minister, addressed his party's supporters on Thursday. We will look to build a strong coalition that is capable of executing the grand guidance and large-scale project of His Highness the King and a government that is capable to continue the path of development which His Majesty has laid out. Despite gaining the most seats in Parliament, Akhanoush's National Rally of Independence will not be able to govern alone. The NRI only got 97 of the 395 seats, which means it will have to form a coalition government with other liberal parties like the Second Place, Authenticity and Modernity Party. Both these political forces are seen to be close to the royal palace in Morocco, where the king still retains the vast majority of power. But the biggest headline of Thursday's results is the resounding defeat suffered by the Justice and Development Party, which had won the last two elections in 2011 and 2015. The PJD saw its parliamentary share diminish from 125 seats to a mere 12, with its leader and Moroccan Prime Minister Saad al-Din Othmani failing to be elected. Within hours of the results, Al-Othmani and the entire leadership of the party announced their resignations. The General Secretariat takes full responsibility for the party's failure, and based on this, the entire Secretariat, headed and led by Saad ad-Din Othmani, announced their resignation effective immediately. Wednesday's vote was the first time a new electoral law was implemented. From the outset, the Islamist party had complained that the law was unfair, claiming it was only introduced to reduce its candidates' chances of winning. The PJD has also filed complaints of voting irregularities in several districts across the country. Notwithstanding, many analysts point to a large protest vote as the main reason for the party's lack of success. They were defeated because, first of all, they did not uh, deliver their promises and people are fed up with their uh, code of conduct and their moral duties, etc. So that's number one. Uh, people don't have jobs, especially after the pandemic, and have not been able to create any jobs or to create the wealth that will create that kind of jobs. So a new makeup for Morocco's parliament with liberal parties now occupying the majority of seats. Voters seem to have punished the former prime minister for his party's failure in improving living conditions. Will a new government be able to deliver the economic reform and change so many people have been asking for? And is that even possible in a system where all power ultimately lies with the king? Jamal Al Shayal, Al Jazeera, Rabat. Let's bring in our guests. Lashan Haddad is a former Minister of Tourism and a political analyst. Jasper Haman is a columnist at Morocco World News. And our third guest, Mohamed Al-Hishami, is a senior research fellow at the Centre for Studies and Research in Social Science. Welcome to you all. Mohamed, if I can start with you, have we gone back to before the Arab Spring with Moroccan politics? Certainly this Justice and Development Party has. It's lost all its, nearly all its seats. I think the best way to describe what happens is, uh, I think it's a situation, a uh, very paradoxical situation. 
uh, I would like to describe it as kind of an expected surprise. It was expected because in the Moroccan political system, given the nature of the political system, uh, the government cannot really uh, have the opportunity to implement its program. So it is very, very difficult to uh, attribute all the good things that happened during the last 10 years to the government. So it's kind of a, a Becephalus system, but in which the last say belongs to the king. The second reason why it was expected is that there was some kind of very um, serious internal divisions that started mm -hmm. uh, early in 2016 following the uh, removal of Abdel Ibn Kiran from the, uh, the previous prime yes, minister. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So this has actually uh, hit the uh, unity of the, the the party, and it ha it is continuing to impact a very bad impact on the unity of the the, the PGD party. I think the other reason why this is expected is that the general atmosphere in the MENA region post-2011 cannot really, uh, is not in favor of allowing a, uh, an Islamist political party to, to win elections for a third time. Uh, it was a surprise in my opinion because it was not a defeat, it was a free fall. It is very, very astonishing the number of seats won by okay. the PGD. From 125 to 13, it's sure. really something right. uh, incredible. Uh, Jasper, do you see the same thing? Has Morocco gone back to how it was before uh, the Arab Spring, the Justice and Development Party, back to where it was, certainly? Well, I definitely think that the, the main uh, winners of the election have been, uh, is a choice for alignment with the, the palace instead of a more uh, a reformist or combative uh, uh, attitude. But at the same time, I think this has also introduced a new era in Moroccan politics where social media, technology uh, spending and having social media savvy young candidates, as with the PAM party, is becoming, a, a, yeah, as the global trend is, is becoming much more important in political life. Uh. Okay, Larson, the, the, the party that won is seen as being closer to the palace. The other two parties are also royalist, you, you can say. Would the king be tempted to roll back the democratic reforms that there have been in, in Morocco now that there's a more favourable parties in, in power? I have seen reports of saying that uh, the parties are closer to the palace, but I think that's a theory that's probably not too relevant to Morocco in the sense that all the parties are, in a sense, close to the palace and also close to the monarchy. So I don't think that there is, as it used before 2011, like there was somebody very close to the, to the palace who is trying to engineer the elections. I think these parties are, are, have worked more or less independently, but I don't think that there are not non-reformist parties among them. As Jasper said, for example, the Istiklal party is a reformist party. The Socialist party is a reformist party. Even the PAM itself, which is the party of authenticity, is a reformist party. So I don't think there is this kind of problem, who is a reformist and who is not, and then also who is close to the palace and who is not. But I mean, at the same time, I think all of them go with specific kind of agenda of the state that the, it's better to move on and move beyond the Islamist spirit in the sense that the Islamists have disappointed. I mean, like grandly in terms of like, I mean, like delivering to the population, delivering on their promises. So I think there is that kind of off sense that, that but, 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 but to go back to what has been said, I mean, with regard to why the PGD fell, I mean, like it's, 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 it's internal divisions within the PGD itself, but also I think the PGD has run out of, of any kind of legitimizing discourse. Because in 2011, it ran against like the deep state and also corruption and all of that. 2016, it ran also against those forces that, that, that prevented the, the Islamists from, from doing their work. But I mean, 2021, there is no rallying cry. But at the same time, they have also like a legitimacy kind of a problem in, that, in the sense that they did not deliver on all of their promises over 10 years. Uh, Mohammed Lashen, Lashen's used this word, used, you've used this word Islamist to describe the Justice and Development Party. It means so many different things to different people and this party is very far from any sort of having any religious influence perhaps these days on its policies. Can you help people understand what the PJD's philosophy was when it first, when it won those first post-Arab Spring elections? 
Yes, I think the problem of the PGD, maybe I can comment on what was said by Professor Haddad, is that he lost, he started losing legitimacy since 2011 because he has been forced in uh, one way or another to endorse policies against which he built his uh, philosophy or his uh, political discourse, like, for example, uh, fighting against corruption and uh, uh, despotism. And this was the slogan of the uh, 20 February movement. He uh, found himself uh, obliged to sign the treaty uh, re-establishing diplomatic Why? ties Why with... Because of the balance of power in the Moroccan political system, uh, I, as I said before, the last say belongs to the king and the big uh, political and economic orientations are uh, defined by the palace. The role of the government in the Moroccan, constitu Moroccan political system, I mean in practice, not uh, according to the constitution, is to uh, two, two things. The first one is to help the uh, king implement his uh, uh, orientations economically, politically, and uh, in terms of public policies. The second one is to take the responsibility of the uh, failures. In case of failure, it is the government that... And we have been witnessing how a big part of the Moroccan press uh, have been uh, severely criticizing the, 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 the government not the whole government as a, a, a whole structure, but the PGD. And it is very, very paradoxical that the, the, the loser is the head of the government the, or the party of the head of government, and the winner is one of the parties that has been in power over the last 10 years. Okay. So this is really uh, interesting to... Lassen, is that why the PJD lost its support, is it didn't do what they wanted? It, it, it was opposed to normalisation of ties with Israel, but was forced to go ahead with it. It legalised cannabis uh, cultivation for medical use, these sort of policies. Is that why they lost their support? I, th I think that's partly why they lost their support, but also I think they did not deliver and they, don't, they didn't have like the competencies to deliver on some of the things that they wanted to deliver on. But the other thing also is that the, 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 the National Party which won the elections, the Liberal Party which won the elections, was in the coalition. But it used the communication strategy whereby all the successes yeah, exactly. of the government <laughs> its own, whereas all the failures of the government said it's it's part of the PGD. It's a very smart move on their part. It made them win. But at the same time, I don't think the PGD has a way to defend its own, its own agenda and its own achievements. But on the other hand, I think the, the PGD came on three things. One of them is like, we are morally honest. We're not going to steal and all of that. So that, that's one thing. The second one, we're going to fight against corruption. We're going to create jobs and we're going to move the economy forward. And the third one, we're going to have a better governance in Morocco. A lot of Moroccans are disappointed because they don't see those things happening on the ground. So if you, if you go and see like middle class, I mean, a lot of them are hurting. A lot of them, I mean, like have kids who don't, who don't have jobs. There, there are all kinds of problems with that. And then the, with, with corruption, they didn't fight corruption. I mean, the index on transparency is about 80 something. So yeah. that's the way they found it when they came in yeah. 2012. So they did not deliver. And I think part of the, 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 of the that incapacity to deliver is the fact that they don't have a lot of experience in running government. Jasper, is this a blow for democracy? If you're looking for democratic reform in Morocco, where do you go? Well, I think at the same, at the, at the current, uh, uh, in the current situation, the way that the, the government is operating vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the power in the palace is the way that the constitution uh, outlines it. This is the way that democracy in, the, in its current state in Morocco is supposed to work. Uh, this is not Syria or Egypt where we have a mock election for our leader. We have a real election for the parliament. And of course, the power of the parliament is to a large extent hamstrung by uh, the, the palace, but at the same time, for democracy, you need young, engaged people. And that's what happened this time with a massive uh, get out the vote. Uh, and the turnout was an encouraging result. So no, I, don't, I think more alignment with the palace does not necessarily mean uh, um, a disavowal of democracy, I think. Mohammed, we often hear talk of a, of a deep state uh, in Morocco, Jasper says that these are not ele the elections here are not like the ones you would have in Egypt, for example. But it, is there? Can you attach any store to that? Is that a fair argument to make, affecting the Justice Development Party's ability to to succeed? Before I answer this question, if I may go to oh, back to the 
question you asked uh, to my colleague. I think it about depends, democracy. Yes, I mean, about democracy. I, 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 I think it depends on what we mean by democracy. In terms of uh, advancing political uh, reform, I think these results might result in slowing down somehow the process. But if we mean by democracy the other aspects, economic and social aspects, I think there is a very ambitious uh, project, uh, which is the new model of development. And I think the main task of this government and the uh, next maybe uh, government to be elected within five years is to implement the new development model. So this uh, will help in improving the quality of uh, life for uh, ordinary people in Morocco, eradicating poverty and uh, improving some human development indicators. Uh, back to the uh, question about the deep state, I think this is a very, very um, difficult question to of answer. <laughs> As a political scientist, I think there is uh, it's it's uh, it's not a scientific actually uh, uh, concept. Deep state maybe uh, refers to some kind of uh, uh, economic and uh, maybe uh, mainly economic interest in, in Morocco. Uh, I think uh, it is very difficult to compare between the Moroccan case and the, the case of Egypt, for example, or, or Tunisia. Morocco has always. Uh, been able to have uh, its own way to do what the others uh, do, but in a very different way. In Morocco, uh, uh, the way we dealt with the Islamists was completely different. Instead of uh, completely eliminating them from the power in Egypt or mm -hmm. trying to give them some kind of real power in Tunisia, uh, the, 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 the Moroccan strategy consisted in simply allowing them to uh, be included, to integrate, to integrate the institutions as a way to tame them. Uh, and uh, then uh, they will uh, realize that uh, what they were promising people is not really uh, easy to achieve in practice. Okay. Last one. National Rally of Independence is, a, is now won the bulk of seats. Aziz Akanoush, its leader, billionaire, businessman, agri former agriculture minister, Mohammed talked about this need to move forward with the king's agenda, this economic uh, development project with those parties in power, is there a good chance that Morocco can move forward with the king's agenda? Will those parties want to implement it? Can I just speak to the question of deep states and also the bloc okay. democracy, just for one okay, sentence? I, I think we have a hybrid regime in the sense that an executive kind of monarchy, but also a highly representative kind of government. So it's okay. a hybrid between executive and also democratic. But I think that's what the Moroccans voted for in 2011. That's what they need. And I happen to also say that that's what we need in the Arab world. We need those kinds of hybrid regimes because we need to have some sort of continuity and stability. And we should but say you're, you're still involved in politics, is fair to say. So <laughs> <that's> <laughs> But, Have you felt the deep state then? Uh, but but, but I, I think if you mean by the deep state is that there is a continuity of the state and its apparatuses and they have, they are watching over strategic, like geopolitical and political interests of the country. Yes, of course it exists as it exists in any other country. But I think there is also the fact that the, the, there is, I mean, like the, the elections have been very free, so I don't think it's really a blow to democracy. But I mean, like with, with the coalition, I think there is now a very good chance. The Moroccans have spoken. And they have given the mandate to three parties. There are three biggest parties in Morocco now, which is the National Independence Party and also the Authenticity and Moderate Party and the Sikhlal Party. So those are the three major parties. They, are, they have some affinity with them. So that will, will go beyond the fact that there, there used not to be some sort of of unity within the ex-government, within the government that is, that is going out now. I think they are more liberal leaning with some social agenda, so I think they will be able to work together. And I think they have a comfortable majority because they're 254, so they will be able to govern all three of them. And I think this is a very rare chance in Morocco to have a coalition of only three parties because beforehand we used to have like six parties, five parties, four parties, and it's very difficult to create some homogeneity within this kind of coalition. So I think there is a good chance that the, the, this is the coalition that will happen. And I think it's good for Morocco, it's good for the big reforms that Morocco is under, undertaking. The pressure is going to be on this coalition though then, isn't it? I mean, I, enormous pressure and expectation. 
expectations are very high and I think also like putting down the reforms especially when in terms of social security in terms of employment in terms of regional kind of, of, of dynamization of the, the economy all of these kinds of things like really reinforcing the role of the middle class those are very high expectations and I think but I think this government will demand the political mandate and also with the people who are within these parties I think they will be able to deliver. Jasper, you think these parties will be able to deliver and get the, the mandate from the king to, to deliver? Um, well, the, la the latter, uh, obviously, I think that is a part of the coalition building, but at the same time, I, th I do not envy uh, our uh, prime minister to be, to be honest, uh, because the task that is set for them is Herculean. Uh, they have their own party program. They have uh, uh, really focused on job creation, boosting the, uh, the economy taking care of uh, the elderly, but at the same time, they have the national projects going on to vastly expand healthcare, vastly expand uh, pensions, uh, and this has all been done ahead of the election as a national project, which has deadlines within their, uh, the five years that they will be in power. There is also, of course, the uh, legalization of uh, medical cannabis, mostly for export, uh, the way it's structured right now, which is going to create a giant agency through, through which billions might flow, and whether this could become an example of a modern Morocco that where corruption can be kept at bay, even when in such a centralized place where so much money goes on. Uh, but there are also, of course, plenty of pitfalls within that, because making all these things come true, it, uh, especially as a billionaire prime minister, you could become either FDR, who delivers a new deal, or you could become Trump, who is seen as a self-serving person who is there. So I think the risk-reward uh, is great in this situation. So, Mohammed, will this new government, however it's made up, we've got a good idea, it'll be these three dominant parties, will it be able to deliver huge challenges, youth unemployment over 30%, challenges of crony capitalism because there's not enough, you, you get the business because of who you know, these sort of challenges, will, this, will they be able to meet these challenges? Actually, nobody can answer this question now, <laughs> but what I am sure about is that this government will not face the same constraints, the same challenges the PGD was faced too, because I am confident that the political atmosphere will change completely in Morocco once the new government is appointed by the king. Uh, it will be 100%, uh, uh, it will have the mandate of the, the king for sure, and it will also take advantage from the fact that it is politically uh, homogeneous government, uh, strong coalition. Uh, but the main challenge, in my opinion, is in addition to the high expectations from the, the government in terms of uh, improving the uh, human development indicators, eradicating poverty and improving the quality of health system and uh, education, is the fact that with the exception of Istiqlal, no one of these parties has some kind of uh, uh, socially rooted constituencies. Okay. They consist mainly in, uh, uh, of notables oh. uh, who can win the elections, but they cannot really control the population. Uh, I think we need to distinguish between two kinds or two types of legitimacy. Uh, they enjoy very strong electoral legitimacy, given the number of seats they won, uh -huh. but they have a big problem, in my opinion, of uh, popular or political legitimacy. Because it's, it's not enough to win elections in order to have uh, a kind of political, uh, in the sense of popular uh, legitimacy. All right. Gentlemen, unfortunately, time has got the better of us. But thanks to all our guests, to Lashen Haddad, to Jasper Haman, and to Mohammed El Hashimi. And thank you, too, for watching. You can see the programme again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. And for more debate, go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. We are at AJ Inside Story. From me, Bernard Smith, and the whole team here in Morocco, thanks for watching.